Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's time for another video about language learning. But before I jump into it, I just wanna say thank you so much for all the support. Got a lot of new subscribers over the past couple months. I hope you're enjoying the videos about personal development, motivation, language learning, gaming. You know what it's about here on this channel. And in today's video, because we're at the start of a new year, 2024, I know everybody's feeling some new inspiration and motivation for learning languages. I bet you've set all kinds of new goals and you have some new study plans and new strategies. And I hope I can be a part of that. I hope we can walk on this journey together. And I thought it'd be a good idea in today's video to give sort of a little recap, a little summary of my language learning background, where I am today and what sorts of services and fun things I can offer to you guys to do with me and my other followers. So uh, first of all, I had my first experiences learning languages in maybe middle school with some Spanish classes here and there, but I, I don't think it was really a requirement as I recall. The first time I faced language learning requirement was in high school, and I didn't really see language learning as something I wanted to do, I just saw it as a banal requirement, something that I needed to survive. There was definitely other classes I was more interested in. I was, I was interested in the English language well enough. I liked reading and creative writing. I was always pretty creative, but I didn't really get how magical language learning truly is. I mean, the ability to command a tongue other than your own and to communicate with another person from another country, to talk to them in their mother tongue and to have that deep heart to heart connection is really special. It's an amazing doorway to another culture and it's gonna make you so empathetic and patient and tolerant, much better communicator. And it's gonna open your eyes to new ways of seeing the world. And as, as, as is so often the case in school, we're not really told why we're learning. We're not, we're not really attached to the beauty of why we're learning what we're learning. We're just kind of like learning because these classes are required. And I think that's why a lot of people detach from school and detach from the academic work because teachers don't at first say, and it may feel a little cheesy to them to say, the beauty of why we're doing this and to try to explicitly lay out some of the philosophy behind why we should love this and how it's gonna benefit us. Sometimes those things are hard to say and hard to explain and it's easier to just say, because you're gonna be graded, because you got homework, because you got a test. And language learning is one of those things that is so transformative. It's gonna get at the core of who you are because so many people who struggle with language learning, they struggle not because X language is difficult, though they and other people may like to think it's the language. It's not really the language. It's actually has to do with our um, sort of personality flaws or character flaws. You know, when you use, and I've thought a little bit about this, and the reason why I think this is, is because when you use language, you're using it to express yourself. You're using it to convey ideas, share information, ask questions. And if you are struggling to do that in a language that's not your own, it's very easy to feel stupid. It's very easy to not feel good enough. It's easy to worry, so easy to worry what other people are thinking about you. Think about this. In your native language, you've grown to such proficiency with it because you've gone through your whole life up to that point learning and working in that native language and going through school in that native language. And now suddenly you're thinking you want to learn a foreign language and you're, you're comparing the two. But you shouldn't compare the two. It's, it's difficult to learn a foreign language. And you're going to have to go through, you know, it's just like you're a little kid again, fumbling with your words and making mistakes. The funny thing is, is kids don't really know. They don't really care. They're making mistakes all the time and just laughing about it and making up words. They are so open to language learning. It's amazing. But with adults, it's different. It, all of our worries about ourself 
our internal self are bound up with foreign languages very tightly. And that's why a lot of people today, they have, um, you know, a lot of their content is designed to, to help you personally develop yourself uh, as, a, as a person, as a human, so that you can succeed with the, the language learning. Um, so yeah, to come back, I never really attached to that all those greater meanings behind it. I never really saw the value it could provide to me and my internal development. I always just saw it as a, a class, a course. Um, but what ended up happening to me is, you know, I went, I went through the foreign language re requirements in high school, in university, never expected to move abroad. But what ended up happening is I did move abroad to China in 2011. I've been living in China ever since. I live here right now. And um, the chance to live abroad really opened my eyes. I'm sure it would for a lot of people. And I realize not everybody may have that opportunity. I hope if you can at least travel abroad for a short time, you will. If you can't do that, I hope you can mix with some uh, communities who are, you know, maybe immigrant communities. I hope you can mix with them and hang out with them sometimes because that's really going to turn you on to language, lear language learning in a, in a way like nothing else could. Um, so being abroad helped me out a lot. It's kept me motivated on a daily basis because I actually needed to use the language. And I think I'm a pretty practical guy. I'm a pretty utilitarian guy. If I'm not really going to be needing something or using something, it's hard for me to, to be that interested in it. I have to see a tangible value in my daily life for, for just about anything that I do. Um, so being in China has helped a lot. And for me particularly, I'm not very strict or diligent about how I study foreign languages. As long as I'm enjoying it and it's fun, that's the way that I do. And I think if you're not in school, like if you're not required to learn a language for to take to take care of the academic requirements if you don't have to develop your language proficiency because of requirements related to a job then relax a little bit okay do what you enjoy and that's going to make you much more well-rounded it's going to your learning and what you know is going to be more organic and more personalized more customized and you're going to be able to stay in the game longer that's what you really need is to stay in the game long enough that it, the language becomes a part of you, okay? If you study really diligently for one, two, three years and you do a great job with that, but then you end up hating it or you burn out and you put it aside, you know, it's kind of like a two steps forward, one step back sort of thing, or however that saying goes, one step forward, two steps back kind of thing. I'd rather forge it into a part of my identity that I enjoy when I want to. And I also want to build it into the, the lifestyle of the people around me and associate with other people who also enjoy it. And that's, that's part of the reason why I've tied gaming into it, because I love gaming. I'm someone who's always loved gaming since I was young. All kinds of games, video games, computer games, tabletop games, outdoor games, I've done it all. I have a very playful personality. And so I thought, hmm, language learning will be great to tie into gaming because gaming is such a creative industry already with so much fascinating um, word usages. I mean, just think about the genres of fantasy and, and sci-fi and others. So creative, so much backstory, so much we can there's there's whole worlds that we can dive into with these games think about zelda or pokemon or final fantasy or or even like um mario or whatever these worlds they they really will turn you on to language learning regardless of what language it is it might just be your native language but they make us good with languages we learn so many new words and we associate with other people around the games right so that's what I've set out to do is I want to make language learning truly unforgettable by creating all these vivid memories around it and by encouraging and coaxing and coercing people to get together. One of the biggest problems that I see nowadays is that people spend a lot of time on social media. 
and they talk about their love of language learning, which I think is great. They share their love of language learning, they share what they're up to, they share sort of their study progress. But just like in so many fields, not only, not only language learning, but the social media trap is that we, f we feel like we're connecting. There's this illusion of connection, but a, a very real and growing sense of isolation. So we have to be so careful about social media and understand what it's doing to us. Is it really building our communication abilities and our social abilities? If you're spending a lot of time sort of posting on social media, but you're not really getting out to spend time with people and absorb their real presence, that's a problem. So I'm working to confront that. And uh, one of the ways that I do that is by running the online gaming sessions for language learners all over the world. They're free, they're open to all levels. We're doing it every Saturday. Now, what time is it? 9 p.m. China time. I live in China. China has no time zones. China never changes the clock, so I usually state things that way, 9 p.m. on Saturday. Other countries may change their time zones throughout the year. Right now, 9 p.m. China Saturday is 8 a.m. New York City time on Saturday. So it's it's morning for the North America for North America. It's afternoon for Europe and the Middle East and it's evening for Asia on Saturday. And I'm also offering some other pop-up events uh, too in this month, January. So I hope you guys will come out. But this is what I really want to encourage, whether in person or through a virtual event that you get together with other people. Sometimes people might think I'd rather invest that time studying by myself, but again, you're missing the point here. When you get together with other people, there's a lot of organic skills that are developing in tandem. You're learning, learning how to be attentive, how to listen well, how to ask good questions, how to keep a conversation going, how to ignite your curiosity. You will learn things that you never expected that you get really excited about. Sometimes people share new ideas about tools or resources or share a concept or a vocabulary word that opens your mind. Things happen that you'll not expect when you get together with people who come from totally different backgrounds in other countries. It's an amazing opportunity nowadays to get together with people online. In some ways, online has an advantage. We can do things online that we never even could in person. I mean, I think both are important. In person in your local community is important because those are the people in your community. So you pay them respect. You show them that you care about them and you want to build the community. Online also has its advantage because you can get together with people from such faraway countries that you never could otherwise, with people who maybe don't have the ability to travel due to economic considerations. So it's fascinating the people that we've been able to bring together into our online gaming sessions. In 2023, we had 44 online games for I think over like a dozen languages with people from over a dozen different countries. We had about 50 different players come out. Maybe about 10 players came out five times or more. So it was a great experience. Now in, in this year, 2024, I'm hoping to do even better. I'm hoping we can host 50 or 60 games at least in this year. So I really hope you will come out and give it a try. There's been more and more signups to the site, which I'm really pleased about. People are just coming to the site languagecardgames.com by the way languagecardgames.com people are just coming to the site seeing the upcoming schedule and signing up so i check their i check there regularly to see who signed up for what games and when those games get closer i reach back out to those people so those people are on my list so you can always go there to see the upcoming schedule and sign up now I am planning to do to have a break in February and maybe March too because my second child is due and this is something that I talked about in my recent video about how I feel as a father um, so if, if you're interested in that you can check out that video but I've decided though I probably could power through more games with my team and set up more events and keep driving hard in that way in a way <laughs> I think that's a little disrespectful to 
my family. I think this is a time when I need to be totally present to this amazing miracle of childbirth. And I want to be so totally there that I'm putting language card games and the online gaming events on pause for a while. But once we come back to it in late March or around that time, I'm really excited to do even more sessions and have even more online gaming events in this year than we did in the last year. I always want to improve. I always want things to get better, okay? But let me conclude by saying I hope 2024 is your best year yet for learning foreign languages. And I know it can be difficult. Sometimes you might be laughed at. Sometimes you might be judged. People might mock your attempts. And you too sometimes may doubt your own self, which is the worst thing of all. You might feel like you've been spinning your wheels for too long and it's been a, a wasted investment of time and energy. But I assure you that if you're feeling that way, there's a way out of that feeling. And people like the people who come out to our online gaming events, we help to build each other up emotionally, which is super important if we're going to achieve this task of learning a foreign language. So don't overlook that. We get together to share our love of learning languages and practice languages, yes, but we also build each other up. We share advice, we give encouragement, we give compliments. So if this sounds like something that you want to be a part of, don't hesitate, don't let any excuse keep you from coming out to give this a try with us. And I hope you'll be one of our next top players who comes out regularly, because that's when you start to see the exponential returns, when you actually get to know people better and better and truly become friends and get excited for the next game to come out and see them again, that's when things start getting really good. All right, that's it for today's video. I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye for now.